I just wanted to make a quick video telling you uh, sort of what I've been up to and why I haven't been making a lot of videos lately. Um, as you probably know, I've got my own company and I design multi-rotor motors and speed controls and small components like that. Um, professionally, I'm running the company and I'm also a designer, uh, consulting for a couple companies. And sort of that's, that's what I do on a daily basis is make things. And I think that's a, a real common interest within guys that are RC related. So I think a lot of you might actually kind of get a kick on, on what I do on a daily basis. So I kind of want to show you my new toy. Um, that's the primary reason that I haven't been putting any videos up lately. And that is my new CNC machine. So this is a Tormac PCNC 1100. It's a fairly inexpensive machine uh, compared to what most things are made on. You know, if you look at like this bicycle, this is a fairly high-end bicycle, a fairly new bicycle. Um, you look at little little components like this piece of aluminum here. Well, that's all CNC milled. Uh, it could be cast, but then it's going to be final milled one way or the other. That milling part probably came off a machine that was two to five hundred thousand dollars and would take up this entire garage. Um, that's just a whole level of machining that you can't really get into, you know, on a personal basis. You have to be a fairly large company to pick up a machine like this. But this machine is still capable of very, very precise cuts, and it's also quite capable uh, to cut steel, aluminum, titanium, G10, carbon fiber, anything like that. So it's, it's a real nice machine, about a 2,000 pound machine. Um, it's, you know, full auto coolant and it, it's, it's just, it's really everything I need to be able to take my designs and bring them in to reality. Um, here's just a, this was actually the second cut I ever did on this. And um, I was looking for something very simple, but uh, detailed that I could just sort of see what the precision of this machine was. And um, it took me a very long time to generate the code to cut this. You can even see the gnarling on the back of the handle. But um, I was very, very happy with this being my very second cut. And uh, it, it was a couple hours of machining because the last, the very last stage was actually very, very fine steps in to get the last detail work. But um, let me kind of just give you a background of, of what I'm primarily using this machine for. Here is my laptop pulled up with SolidWorks. I've been using SolidWorks since the 2006 version, so around 2007 was actually when I was doing it. And um, this is this is the majority of my life. Is this this program? I use SolidWorks every day of my life, and um, I use it to design things for my own company, and I use it to design things for other companies as well. And um, this here, if you look up close, is sort of a a mock-up of a tricopter pivot where this is actually where your motor would go so it's got a standard uh, 16 by 19 uh, mounting pattern there and then these are 16 millimeter clamps so it can go on 16 millimeter booms like uh, Taro's stuff and a lot of people use it these are 10 by 4 millimeter bearing pockets those will actually change to something that's better with side loading I actually don't really like using standard bearings for that type of purpose you probably want to use a thrust bearing and um, this is just a little servo mounting plate with a specific servo that I chose for this application. Now I designed all this in probably two to three hours of work and um, you can take it from this point to this point with a machine like this. And sorry about the lighting, it's already dark out here, but um, this is essentially a functional part. So from CAD through CAM into reality. It's not super easy to do this stuff. It takes a little bit of experience for sure. But my god is it rewarding. Like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This this is the type of stuff I really truly enjoy. So this uh, I think a lot of you guys would get a kind of a kick out of this process of how to how to go through the process of designing and then taking it through a cam which is going to essentially design the code that this machine will run and taking it into a real product. Now this is just the very first version. This is probably about two and a half days of work, two days of work to get it to this point. And um, 
it's pretty close, actually. I I'm pretty pleased that it's about 95% of what I want it to be for the very first version. And this is something that before I would design and each part would have to be sent to a prototype shop. If I did it in the US, you know, say this little top piece right here, would probably cost me something between, I don't know, four and eight hundred dollars for one of them, if I just wanted one. Yet if I bought a thousand of them, they could cost as low as two dollars. So having a machine like this and being able to run it really does make a huge difference when you're a designer and you're trying to bring stuff like this into reality. Um, this is really close. I'll actually be flying this prototype probably in the next mm, two to three weeks, depending on how the rest of the project goes for the whole tricopter. Um, I'd like to be able to perfect this and sell it as a ready-to-go unit for 16 millimeter booms and potentially other size booms as well. So people can just buy it, slap it on, and there you go, a tricopter. You can convert a hex frame into a tricopter. Um, and this, as far as I know, will be the nicest system, uh, especially if I get the thrust bearings truly worked out. Because uh, there's a lot of great systems out there. Uh, you know, true credit to David for bringing out the tricopters, like true awesomeness, a long, long time ago. But, um, you know, some people want, like, true precision. And um, if you're going to be flying, like, a big motor like this and a six-cell system, which is what this is designed for, uh, this will be a pretty good a pretty good solution. Let me give you kind of a rundown on how the machine works. It's using what's called Mach 3 which is a uh, software that controls the controller essentially and tells it how to traverse. Here's a little jog. I choose the X and I can jog the machine left and right. Here's the Y forward and back and the Z up and down and right now, I don't have a power draw bar, so I have to manually change my tools. But um, you can lock the spindle into place, pull back on this, and you can get the tool out. This tool I'm using is uh, it's a fly cutter. It's designed for high precision surface cutting. So anything you, so you see that's almost a, a mirror finish, it's generally done on something like that. But um, I don't know, guys. I just I just love. I love this stuff. This is what I'm meant to do, um, is, is design and build and bring things into reality. And um, this machine is truly helping me get there. And also the 3D printer I bought a couple years ago, that's, that's been huge. So um, I hope you enjoyed sort of the, the tour of what I do and what I like to do and how I do it. And um, if you're interested in this type of stuff as well, and I think a lot of you are, just building and tinkering and making and stuff like that. Let me know if you're if you're interested in seeing my stuff go through its design process, um, how I refine it, how I design it, how I go into production and prototyping and testing and stuff like that. Because um, I'm I'm very interested in making more videos. I just I need to have really good content, and I want to make sure people are interested in stuff like this. And if you're not, let me know. If you just if you want to know it works and just buy it, great. So either way. Let me know if you're interested in sort of how-tos on designing and machining and manufacturing and even 3D printing if you want. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.